Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all having a blessed and fantastic morning, guys. I am very excited about today's live stream. We've already recorded two videos today. Those two videos will be coming out later and in this live stream. I want to break down some more of the things that we discussed in today's video that will be coming out in a little over two and a half hours. In that video, we talked about the F2 pool news. In that video, we talked about market manipulation. And in this live stream, my friends, we are going to be talking about a potential breakout on Bitcoin coming in the next couple of days because of the F2 pool, potential market manipulation. You might be wondering to yourself, Jeb, if we're seeing market manipulation coming out of one of the largest mining pools in the cryptocurrency space, why in the world would that be a bullish thing? Why in God's green creation would it be? That might be a bullish thing on Bitcoin. Well, we're going to be discussing all of that and more in this live stream, and I am very, very excited for it. Good morning to everybody who is joining up on chat. We are going to give about five minutes to let some people join on in. I did get a haircut. Thank you very much for pointing it out. I'm very happy with it. Where would all my hair go? I don't know. It, it disappeared. I don't know. Top of the morning to you, laddies. How are you doing? Give me a one in chat if you're looking forward to the live stream. We're going to sit here and answer some questions communicate with the cryptocurrency community for a little while and then we're going to jump straight on into some bitcoin technical analysis we're going to be doing some analysis on the bitcoin market maybe even ethereum if you are interested in that and we're also going to be doing some fundamental analysis on the f2 pool news give me a seven in chat if you've heard about that and you are looking forward to hearing more about it thank you very much for the support on the live stream by hitting the like button and the support for my haircut by telling me in the chat Oh, goodness gracious, guys. I'm looking forward to this stream. My friends, been a good morning. Got up at 6 a.m. this morning, did an arm workout, drinking some coffee. Good day. I love getting up before the crack of dawn. I love beating the sun up out of bed. And I'll tell you what, I also love my coffee. I just tell you, I love coffee. <clears throat> Let's see here. Much like my hair right now. Looks good, man. Looking forward to the knowledge drop. Bitcoin to 36K today. Hello from Scotland. Hello from America. You will look hard. I don't know what that means, but sure. Um, are alts, any alts you're into? If you consider Ethereum an altcoin, then Ethereum. Like the video, you dang noobs. Yeah, like the video. Hit that like button, guys. We have a lot of things that we are going to be doing today, and I'm looking forward to it. The haircut looks good. It suits me. Thank you very much. Let's see. God bless you, Jeb. God bless you, my friend Jay. Digging the new do. Bro, Lindsey Sterling is baller. I love Lindsey Sterling so much. This is a concert shirt that I got on a tour. You can see on the back, I was in, uh, I saw her in Washington, D.C. I forgot what day it was. It was somewhere. What's up from Grand Rapids? What's up, Grand Rapids? What's up from Florida, my friend? Imagine life without coffee. I don't want to. I lived my life without coffee for a very long time, and it was not a happy life. What's up, Jeb, a fellow Floridian? Go Bucks! Go Bucks! Let's see who wins. Give me a one in chat if you think who's playing the who's playing the Super Bowl against the Buccaneers and the Super Bowl. It's the Bucks and who? Um, the Chiefs. Give me a one if you think the Chiefs are going to win, and the two if you think the Bucks are going to win. I'm going to a Super Bowl party. Mr. Paul uh, donated 10 Ron. Wake up before the sun does. Amen to that. Yes, sir. Roll Tide said Guy Thompson. Man, did you see, goodness gracious, that running back on um, that wide receiver. I'm sorry. What's his name? Uh, on uh, What's that guy's name? What's his name? I'm Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith was killing it against whoever it was a while back. Devontae Smith is insane. Roll Tide, my friends. My dad was born in, in well, my dad was born in Alabama, so I've been a Bama fan for a long time. Should be cold now without so much hair, but that looks good. Yeah, it's pretty cold outside. It's like thirty degrees outside in the, this morning when I was working out. It sucked. I'm a coffee junkie. I can understand that, guys. We're not gonna ramble too much more. Devonte Smith is killing it. Yep, that's. Uh, thank you guys for helping me with that name. We aren't going to waste any more time. We're going to jump straight on to some technical analysis. So hold any questions you have for a little bit because I won't be looking at chat. Can't have chat up while I'm doing this. So let's go ahead and get started. There are several things that we need to talk about on Bitcoin today. You probably remember in yesterday's live stream, I discussed how Bitcoin was in the process of bouncing around the 20 daily exponential moving average. That is sitting at $33,600 right here. You can see this blue line. That is the all important, all critical 20 weekly EMA. If you guys remember in CT2A, we have a video completely dedicated to the 20 EMA right down there. I think I may have just said weekly. I meant daily. It's the 20 daily EMA. 
And it is very important that Bitcoin stays above it. During rallies, you typically see Bitcoin will come down and test it as support. The same way that you might see a child come and test their mother to make sure that everything is good, they're safe, they're secure, make sure mommy agrees with it. Bitcoin goes to their mommy, the 20 weekly daily EMA, depending on the kind of market you're in, either the daily or the weekly. In this case, we're looking at the daily. Notice Bitcoin fell below the 20 daily EMA back on the 21st of January. That might potentially have a lot to do with the F2 pool news that you guys have been hounding me about. We made a video on it this morning. It's coming out in a few hours. We're going to talk about some more in this stream. Give me a one in chat if you're looking forward to that. But the point of the technical analysis today is I want to show you where I think Bitcoin is going. Notice on this candlestick right here, we saw Bitcoin rally in a very big way on January 31st. And going on the hourly chart, you can see that in the span of just two hours from wick to wick, Bitcoin rallied 18.5%, over $6,000 in two hours. We streamed about this on Friday and talked about how that was in relation to Elon Musk being bullish on Bitcoin, putting Bitcoin in his Twitter bio. You remember that. He still has it in there if as of uh, yesterday i think he still has it there today hashtag bitcoin with 45 million followers being able to see that same thing is happening over on uh mr beast channel mr beast twitter excuse me he's got 9 million followers hashtag bitcoin big deal guys that is a really big deal talking about gamestop stock everybody's talking about this stuff you might be wondering why did bitcoin not rally farther when not only remember this guys elon musk talked about bitcoin Mr. Beast talked about Bitcoin. Bitcoin during that broke the 20 daily EMA, broke a downtrending level of resistance, broke 35K as resistance, and started converging bullish on itself. RSI was primed and ready. We saw a ton of volume. Let's look at volume here. Look at all that volume. You might be wondering, why did we not manage to go into a big old bull market if we saw all of those things come together? Why is Bitcoin still trending to the downs? Or excuse me, why is Bitcoin still trading sideways? Why did Bitcoin not break out farther? That very well may be because of the F2 pool news. Again, if you haven't heard about that, we're going to talk about it in a little while. Essentially, there is strong evidence to suggest that F2 pool, the largest mining pool in the cryptocurrency industry, responsible for 15% of hash rate, is dumping 10,000 Bitcoin a day. That's $350 million in daily selling pressure coming out of them. We're going to talk about that later, but I want to start by doing some technical analysis and laying the foundation from a technical sense and a technical standpoint on Bitcoin. Remember, we talked about all these different things. We talked about Bitcoin breaking resistance. We talked about Bitcoin breaking 20 D, uh, daily exponential moving average. We talked about it sending us support. What I haven't shown you in this stream yet is that Bitcoin is converging very quickly on itself on MACD. In fact, MACD line, signal line are set up, primed and ready to cross each other and converge in just the next couple of days. This is likely what it's going to end up looking like like we're almost certainly going to see a bullish cross on those before february the 4th or maybe on february the 4th i should say that's probably when we're going to see that happen if bitcoin continues to trade sideways now someone did just say bull flag it's very possible this is a bull flag and bitcoin breaks out and rallies i think that this market is being suppressed right now do i think that there's crime being committed by f2 pool no they are perfectly allowed to sell their bitcoin however they like however if they are doing it for the purposes of suppressing the market then you could argue it's a form of market manipulation that's where the lawyers might get involved the point is f2 pool selling a lot of bitcoin may this is a theory we don't know may be responsible for Bitcoin having lower prices right now than we might expect based off our technicals and fundamentals. If you'll remember, I have talked many times on this channel about how ugly my chart is. Look at all the stuff I drew on here in yesterday's live stream. Let me get all this off of here. I talked about in yesterday's live stream about how during Bitcoin bull markets, you will see Bitcoin retrace to the 20 weekly exponential moving average over and over and over again to find support. We saw it happen in 2016 and 17 during that bull market where we rallied 10,000%. We'd pull back to it, pull back to it, pull back to it. There, 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 there. Over and over and over again, we saw Bitcoin do that, and it was a very healthy bull market. In this bull market so far, we have not seen that happen. Bitcoin has not pulled down and tested the 20 daily EMA. Excuse me, I'm sorry, the, daily, the weekly exponential moving average. But what we have seen is that even though we haven't pulled that far to the downside, if you look at a lot of these pullbacks in this bull market, they normally lasted between 14 and 60 days, and they normally resulted in a 30 to 40% correction. Well, it may be that Bitcoin doesn't need to come all the way down to the 20 weekly EMA, because if you look at this, 
over the course of 21 days, we pull back 31%. That may be a big enough correction for us to actually correct and consolidate, lock in gains and prime ourselves and set ourselves up for further rallies to the upside. It is possible that that is a big enough correction. I still, even without this F2 pool news, think that it's possible that Bitcoin could pull all the way down to the 20 weekly EMA. I think it's possible. And in fact, I think there's a good chance that it'll happen. But in light of what's going on with F2, in light of the increased selling pressure that we're seeing, it is very possible that Bitcoin breaks out above $35,000. And we do see something akin to a bull flag happening here in this market. So I want to hear your take on that. Give me a one in the chat if you think Bitcoin is going to rally above 35K and rally much farther than that up to 42 and above. Or give me a two in chat if you think Bitcoin is going to pull back down to uh, about twenty eight, uh, about $25,000 where the 20 weekly EMA is. want to hear your opinion in the chat. <sighs> I'm going to catch my breath a little bit, guys. Whenever I talk this much, this fast, for this long, completely run out of breath. I'm going to take a drink and uh, of my coffee. It's going to be good. We're going to answer some questions. I want to hear what you think. Where do you guys think we're going? Give me something to talk about here in chat. Any questions you have, let me know. On the day Elon Musk, on the day, on the Elon Musk day, they dumped 120K in Bitcoin. Sneaker, the number I saw said 12K in Bitcoin, 12K Bitcoin worth what at the time it would have been 380 million dollars something like that <clears throat> you're awesome fyi studio light reflection that's our key light i'm sorry that's our fill light or key lights uh, aperture 120d i know it's in there i know it's in the sign we're about to actually completely redesign the set so that's why i'm not worried about it um it's not gonna be a problem for a while <laughs> So I appreciate you pointing that out. But yeah, we're going to work on that. Let's see. Uh, anything on Bitcoin and Ethereum? Maybe some other news that you guys want to hear me talking about. Looking fresh and bullish today, Jeb. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It needs to touch the 20 weekly EMA. It would make sense. Did TD Sequential reset on Bitcoin? Great question. Let's look at that. So... That's something I actually want to bring to your attention is that even though Bitcoin didn't have a huge correction looking at it on the weekly chart, so far, if the weekly chart closes like this, yeah, we actually did reset weekly chart TD sequential. Because if we look out to the monthly chart on Bitcoin, we're overextended on TD sequential. But what's interesting, looking back on the history of Bitcoin, during bull markets on Bitcoin and also in Ethereum, I can show you, ETHUSD, a lot of time during bull markets, you just stay overextended. That's just kind of how that works. So it's actually possible that Bitcoin stays overextended on monthly chart. In fact, it might be one of the indicators that we're moving into a bull market in the first place is that Bitcoin gets overextended on TD sequential on monthly chart. On weekly chart, however, it's not anywhere near as common to stay overextended. Typically speaking, once you get overextended, you are going to have a correction. We saw it happen right here back in December of 15 had our correction we saw it happen right here in october and november of 16 and then in january of 17 we had our correction saw it happen here in uh june of 2017 had our correction happened at the top 2017 uh, saw our correction so yes in fact we do actually see that td sequential generally speaking gets reset on the weekly chart and that makes a lot of sense because td sequential is something you should listen to and especially on daily chart and to a lesser extent on weekly chart it normally gives very very strong signals Good question, but luckily, at the moment, it looks like that has been reset. So, Jeb, literally reading past my ref request. That's because you're spamming my chat, my friend. And uh, so, yes, I am literally reading past your ref request. If Was that you spamming? I don't want to throw you under the bus if that's not you. No, that was you spamming. My friend, if you post something more than once, I'm probably not going to read it. That's just the way it goes. Everybody has equal right to me reading something, and there's a lot of things. I try and read every single message, but spamming it makes me less likely to want to answer it. That's just not fair to everyone else. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, let's see here. Let us see here. Reading some questions. Jeb, who's to say F2 will... F2 pool doesn't keep suppressing the price. Isn't TA useless if that's the case? James Watson, that's exactly the topic of today's video that's coming out in a couple of hours, and that's exactly what we're about to talk about, is that technical analysis may be being corrupted by F2 pool, potentially market manipulation, but at least selling pressure. We are very confident that they're selling Bitcoin. 
In fact, one of the co-founders, I think his name's Chun Wang, admitted to it yesterday on Twitter. We're going to get to all of that in a second. It's a whole scandal going on, but it's very possible that that is suppressing the price and that our technical analysis has to understand and um, and um, uh, be, be in accordance with that. Remember, guys, I told you before, technical analysis is one of the most powerful ways of analyzing markets, but it has to be used in a wider package of analysis, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, news, adoption, inflows and outflows of valuation into the space and, and out of the space. You have to understand all of those things. So technical analysis can take a back burner when news and fundamentals, this being a news and a fundamental cycle uh, uh, type of thing, um, start affecting price. So yes, that's very important. Elon Musk, Michael Saylor summit on the fourth. Mark Cuban will go sky high very soon. ETH will follow along with it. Doctor Strange, we're making a video on that tomorrow. Michael Saylor is getting a ton of industry insiders in one room in a conference to explain Bitcoin to them and why MicroStrategy just bought hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. We might be about to see some major power players over the next 24 months accepting Bitcoin because of what Michael Saylor is doing. Very helpful for the industry. I'd love to hear your opinions on that in the chat. Ah, let's see. Um, Jeb, don't you think it's fine that F2 Pool is A, selling? They're just making Bitcoin more decentralized in the end. That's actually my point in the video that I uploaded today is that I is, I was talking about no matter whether or not F2 Pool is selling Bitcoin to manipulate the market and drop the price or if F2 Pool is just selling the money to buy, is just selling the Bitcoin to buy more mining equipment, it's actually bullish on Bitcoin. Excuse me. Well, yeah, it's bullish for Bitcoin in two different ways. But it's bullish for Bitcoin either way, because either one, they're effectively using market manipulation to short the price of Bitcoin and buy back in, or they're selling Bitcoin to buy more mining equipment because they're bullish on the future of Bitcoin. Either way, it actually speaks volumes to how bullish F2 Pool and its leaders are on Bitcoin. So yeah, I would agree with that statement. Wow, this guy does not want to speak on ADA, Lamau. I am more than happy to speak on ADA if you guys would like. I will talk about ADA later on in this stream. I see so many of you guys uh, talking about it. So yes, we will talk. We'll do some Cardano technical analysis here in a little bit. Um, uh, but it's a pump and dump. Don't be blind to it. I will admit I have not. Um, I, I haven't looked at ADA technical uh, news today, so you guys will have to tell me if there's anything crazy going on in ADA as far as technical, as far as fundamental is, uh, fundamentals are concerned. But I'm glad and happy to do some technical analysis on it if you would like. So let's go ahead and talk about this F2 pool stuff because I know you guys are curious about it. The first thing you need to understand about F2 pool is that F2 pool was founded in 2013. It was co-founded in China. One of the people that co-founded it was named Chun Wang. And I'm going to show you his Twitter real quick and lay the foundation for this just to get everything out of the way so that you guys don't think that I'm just making stuff up here. Chun Wang, um, do I have that name right? I believe I do. Uh, I should. Yes, I do. There is it. There's his name. Satoshi Fish. Satofishi. Satofishi. So I want to show you this guy. You see, Bitcoiner since 2011, co-founded F2 Pool Official for Proof of Work and Stake Fish for POS, Korea, Republic of. If you scroll down on his Twitter here, you're going to see a quote from him. Said right here. Earthlings intelligence hasn't fully developed. Their education systems has their education system has serious problems too. He's a big fan of Elon Musk. He's referencing something not important. That but he also just said that's why I just soddle, sold 4 billion dollars worth of bitcoin, hope to exchange it for a one-way ticket to Mars. First things first. F2 pool is claiming that they're not selling a bunch of bitcoin. The co-founder just said that he just sold $4 billion worth of Bitcoin. So yes, in fact, they are selling. In fact, if you look on a website, it's called Quant Crypto. I'm going to show you this. Um, Got to get my uh, article up here. If you look on, uh, I think it's called Crypto Quant. Yeah, Crypto Quant. If you look on that site, I'm going to show you from this Cointelegraph article, you can actually see the outflows of cryptocurrency and specifically Bitcoin on F2 pool over the Bitcoin price. Notice that we saw... Something like 50,000 Bitcoin flowing out of uh, F2 pool around the dates of about January 15th to January 22nd, somewhere in there, and likely it's continuing. If you look at the price on Bitcoin, and we go over to the daily chart, what happened around January 15th? We saw this was January 15th right here. 
This was January 21st. They were selling a ton of Bitcoin in here. And what was Bitcoin doing? It was being pushed down by some force. Maybe it doesn't have any, well, definitely it doesn't have everything to do with F2 pool, but maybe them selling wasn't the leading factor to this downtrend from $39,000 all the way down to a bottom of 28,000. But it's interesting timing that one of the largest holders of Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency space would be selling within the exact same seven day period that we saw an $11,000 dump, a 28% dump on Bitcoin. Now, I want to point something out. We needed to see a dump on Bitcoin anyway. Bitcoin was overextended. It actually makes sense that they were selling if they're trying to sell the tops. I'm going to get back to that. If they're trying to sell the tops for Bitcoin, sell above $30,000, buy back in lower. There's nothing actually wrong with that. The issue comes when we start to cons consider the concept and the theory. It is a theory. This is not proven, so I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. I'm not trying to defame F2 Pool. I don't want anyone to think that, oh, F2 Pool is a boogeyman. Them selling Bitcoin is within their right. The question is, were they selling Bitcoin for the purpose of manipulating the market, dropping the price, and buying back in lower? If that was happening, then that is criminal. Maybe not in China, but definitely in America. That would be classified as market manipulation and some form of insider trader trading, I would believe, actually. Not a lawyer, not a securities lawyer, maybe wrong on that. It's not something that looks very good on them if that's the case. The point I'm trying to make here is that it makes a whole lot of sense that at the exact same time that they're selling tens of thousands of Bitcoin, we see a major dump on Bitcoin. It makes sense that if they're doing that, that may be part of the reason that we're pulling back. And that actually answers a question why Bitcoin has been so anemic since Elon Musk shouted out Bitcoin. Guys, Elon Musk, the richest man on planet Earth, either him or Bezos, they're going back and forth. They're playing this whole PewDiePie T-Series king of YouTube slash king of the wealth game right now. It goes back to that. Why did Elon Musk pumping Bitcoin by putting hashtag Bitcoin in his uh, Twitter bio and him v verbally expressing to other industry insiders that he is a supporter of Bitcoin and he sees major bullish potential for this cryptocurrency, why did that not lead to a massive rally on Bitcoin? That is one of the biggest fundamental developments this year has seen so far. And we saw Bitcoin rally 20% in two hours. And then what did it do? Trade it sideways and crash. I want to know why F2 Pool is selling all of this Bitcoin. And I want to hear your take on this also. Spencer Nicholas just donated $5. Thank you very much. So first, First of all, thank you for your videos and help. It is awesome what you do. Second, do you take Ethereum for CT2A? My friend, we will be more than happy to accommodate for that. So yes, go ahead and shoot us an email at cryptojeb at gmail.com and we will process that. That is perfectly fine. We will do that, my friend. I am. I, I would love to take your Ethereum because I am very bullish on Ethereum. Absolutely. So, want to hear your opinions on this, guys. This is still a developing story. We're still researching this. We're still trying to find out as much as we can about this. If I'm wrong on anything I just said, please... Please tell me so that I can correct myself, but I'm pretty sure everything I just said is is, uh, is accurate and factual, and I want to make sure that we are presenting this as uh, factual as we possibly can. And again, I don't want to necessarily throw F2 pool under the bus. We don't know they did anything criminal, and we certainly don't know that... Well, first of all, we don't know they did anything wrong, and we certainly don't know if they did anything criminal, so I'm not in any way condemning F2 pool, but it may be the reason that we're not seeing a bigger rally, and it may be indicative that we're about to see a big pump on Bitcoin because when that selling pressure lifts, all that bullish pressure coming from Michael Saylor talking to all these other big industry names could potentially lead to a major rally on Bitcoin. Let's see that coffee mug again. Does it have a lockable lid? Yeah, it's just something I found on Amazon. It's a uh, Bubba. I think it's called Bubba. Yeah, it's called Bubba. And it's got a lockable lid. I'm not going to I'm not going to test it, but it uh, should be good. For the CT2A Academy, can I pay with Cardano? We normally, we prefer to take Bitcoin and we sometimes take Ethereum just to accommodate for people. Um, if you wouldn't mind converting it, it'd be easier for us because we have a, we we have about 100 emails that we, that we process every single day. And it'd be easier for us if, um, if you just absolutely have to pay with Cardano. We can probably accommodate for it, but it might take a little longer for us to process it for you. How do I donate? Chris Valencia, you can donate by hitting the button in the chat. I think there's a dollar bill sign down there. And you can hit that, and then you can donate, or you can donate to our, um, you can donate to our cryptocurrency um, addresses in the description box of our videos. By the way, if you guys don't know what CT2A is, I'm going to mention it really quickly because we've had several people talking about it. CT2A is the academy that we run. 
has over 36 videos and 12 hours of content teaching you everything from the very basics of technical analysis, the introductory material, everything from how to set up and use Binance, depth charts and stop limits, all this stuff that may be overwhelming for you in the beginning, but that you need to understand as a foundation of your ability to operate in this space. We also talk about TradingView. This is a 35 minute video detailing everything in TradingView, breaking it down nice and simple so that you understand how to use all the tools. TradingView was one of the most daunting things that I had to learn when I got into the cryptocurrency space. It may be a barrier for you we have a video breaking all that down then we have an entire section down here on the vast majority of the technical indicators that I use on a daily basis here running this YouTube channel, moving averages, RSI, RSI divergence, MACD, Bollinger Bands, trend lines, continuation patterns, wedges and pennants, all that stuff. Introduction to candlestick analysis, we go over I think nine different uh, candlesticks candlestick types in that video. Then in the technical analysis section, we get into how you actually apply because technical analysis isn't just reading indicators. You have to interpret those indicators and that's where the analysis comes in. In this portion of the course, we teach you how to actually interpret those indicators. So that is the course, guys. If you're interested, we are still running the New Year's 2021 coupon code. You can find that in the top of the pen. You can find that in the top of the description down below and you can also find it in any of our videos. Um, so... If you are interested, you can join us. We have over 3,000 students, and they're loving every minute of it. Give me a one in chat if you're in CT2A and you're loving it, guys. All right, let's see here. Every time Elon Musk opens his mouth, the stock slash cryptos fly up. I'm sure it's planned. <laughs> Never know, maybe. Um... Let's see here. Wow, who's this guy with the high and tight haircut? Y'all be going to town on my haircut, bro. It's just a haircut. <laughs> See all those ones in chat. Those are the people that have gone through CT2A and are loving it. If you're interested, there's more information on our website. You can actually get two of our videos for free. If you scroll down on the website, there are free preview videos on CT2A's landing page. Hit the top link in the description box down below, and it will take you there. It's a great investment for your money. The fact of the matter is, if you don't understand how to trade analyze and invest in cryptocurrency markets, you're going to be in this space and you're going to lose money. That's just the way it's going to go. You have to invest in your education or it's just going to be very, very difficult for you to actually make it in this space. 35K, the new resistance. Bulls are fighting hard. Yes, $35,000 looks like it is the new resistance level. And I would be very, very interested to see how Bitcoin operates around it. I want to see if Bitcoin can break through it. If it can, it's potential that we rally to a new all-time high. How far do you think Bitcoin will get in a year? In the next year, I could see Bitcoin trading between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars, maybe somewhere around seventy-five to eighty. You remind me of a young Dave Ramsey. Are you a fan? So, I first and foremost, I'm not an expert on Dave Ramsey because I don't watch a show. I do know uh, getting CT2A this week, best investment is on you. Thank you so much, Zito. Welcome to the Academy, my friend. How tall am I? I'm 5'10". Uh, Dave Ramsey, I think, is a, is, is a good influence from, from what I've seen. I disagree with him on some things. I disagree with Dave Ramsey on the concept of just running a life with absolutely no debt. I think debt is, well, I don't know. I, I don't think. I know that debt is a tool that can be used for good. Now, Dave Ramsey has the idea, pay, use a 15-year mortgage, buy cars in cash. That's well and good for most people. And considering his target audience being most people and not entrepreneurs like myself, that's great. What's your course? I'm interested. The course is the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. It'll teach you everything from the very basics all the way up through the more advanced concepts of technical analysis so that you can understand how to work and trade and profit in these markets. It's really important you invest in your education. That is linked in the description box down below. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here, by the way. But my, but my point with Dave Ramsey, his audience are, are the kind of people that have nine to fives, they live in a neighborhood with a white picket fence. They have a wife and two kids and a dog and, you know, like the baby on board thing on the back of their minivan. I get that. For that audience, he's right. Use as little debt as possible. Pay everything off. Own your house and your car in full. I agree with him. For someone who is an entrepreneur and trying to grow a business, it is terrible advice. I'll tell you why. I'm about to move into a new building. We're looking in the $600,000 to $1.2 million price range to upgrade the office space that we have right now. We're going to build out several new sets. We're going to be upgrading to our red camera. We have a bunch of things that we're doing here on this channel. We already have eight employees, and we're probably going to 20 in the next 12 months. 
for me, it's a very bad idea to try and pay everything off in cash. Right now, I have no debt. Right now, everything I own, I own in full. But when we move into that new building and I buy that building, I put $200,000 down in cash, I'm not going to buy the building in cash. I could, but I'm not going to. And the reason I'm not going to is because as an entrepreneur, I need to stretch money as far as I possibly can. And if that means getting a 10% loan, if it's possible, I'm going to do that because that cash can be reinvested at a higher interest rate on cryptocurrency or on other real estate projects or even in the S&P 500 than the 3% I'm going to be paying in a loan to the SBA for the offices that we are going to be buying. So the, the thing I have with Dave Ramsey is that for his target audience, I agree with a lot of what he says. If you're not in his target audience, be careful implementing what he says because what he says is not meant for you. For an entrepreneur like me trying to aggressively grow a business and expand very quickly with this industry growing, if I followed a lot of his principles, it would stifle my growth as a business owner. So I need you to understand that. It depends on who you are. It depends on your financial situation as to whether or not you should do what he says. I don't know if he specifies that in his show. I think he might. If he does, then good on him. If he doesn't, then just be careful of it. But otherwise, I think Dave Ramsey is a pretty good um, influence. I think he's someone that you can listen to. I think you should take everything that everyone says with a grain of salt. As I've always taught you guys, think for yourself. Don't let anyone else do your thinking for you. Um, but yeah, that's that's my opinion. I I look more five foot seven eighths. Five seven five eight. Is that what you're saying? I'm five ten, almost five eleven. Um, Dave Ramsey saves people in debt. Yeah, look, for, like I said, for his target audience, for the people that have $72,000 of credit card debt, listen to Dave Ramsey. Get yourself out of credit card debt. I completely agree with him. If you are on top of your financial game and you're making the kind of money that we're making and, and we can grow aggressively, it's different. I am not. I don't have a dime of credit card debt. I, I'm not... I don't have a big, I don't have a problem with debt. I don't have a problem with spending too much money. Guys, I can go and buy a new Lambo in cash, but I don't. I, I, I'm buying a new car. I am trying to stop myself from, I, I don't want to spend more than $20,000 on a car and I could spend $250,000 on a car. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to make a point. I don't have a problem with debt. A lot of people have a big problem with debt. If you have a problem with debt, listen to him. Chris Valencia just donated $10. I got a real good feeling. My friend, I got a real good feeling too. Thank you so much for that donation. We're going to put that in the chips, in the, in the, what should we call it? What should we call the donation pot? What should we call the pot that we put the money into? Um, what am I going to buy with the donation? Coffee. Put it, thank you for putting it in the coffee pot. That works. Coffee pot. That's a real thing. Um, what happened to your hair gel? I got this thing called a haircut. They just invented them recently, and I got one, and I love it. Look, I, I, don't, I never knew what haircuts were. Clearly, if you've watched this video, um, this channel for a while, Clearly, I have been lacking the understanding of what haircuts are to this day. Beer fund, I can't drink beer. I am 20, I'm 20 years old, so I, uh, <laughs> but I'm also a teetotaler anyway, so when I turn 21, I probably won't drink that much. You're the best, Jeb. You're the best, Jebby. Thank you so much. Take all the debt you can and buy Bitcoin. It's losing value every day. No, don't do that. Do not do that. Don't listen to him, guys. That's a terrible idea because you will put yourself in a very, very bad situation if you're not careful. How big can we expect the Chinese New Year's dump to be? <sighs> I try to be very open-minded with these Chinese New Year's thing. Grow a man bun once in your life. I had one in high school. It didn't look good. Um, <laughs> I try to be very open-minded with whales and this F2 pool stuff and Chinese New Year. At the end of the day, guys... I think a lot of that stuff is a little bit overhyped. I think it is overhyped because, quite frankly, it, it gets clicks. And I, I try to not take part in that too much. This F2 pool stuff very well may be having an impact on the market. I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't think that it might actually be having a big impact on the market. I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know how big of a dump it's going to be. I think it'll probably dump. I just, I don't, I don't know how big it will be. <laughs> you just realized that BitBoy's twice my age. Holy moly. Yeah. I need to call BitBoy, actually. I want to get him on the channel. Give me a one in chat if you'd like me to have BitBoy on the channel. I'm thinking about doing a collaboration with him. He's, good. he's, a, he's a cool guy. Um, plus, Dave Ramsey is cocky and proud and belittles his audience. I, like I said, I didn't watch him, so I didn't know that. Um, I started making tons of money once I stopped listening to him. Yeah, the thing is, guys, when you're thinking about finances, I'm actually going to be starting a financial channel in the future, an entrepreneurship and business channel. Um, 
when you're thinking about finances, there's two different ways to think about it. You can think about it in a very passive way, a very defensive manner, which is what he teaches. He teaches a very defensive approach to personal finance. I have a very aggressive approach to personal finance as far as investment and accumulating assets. I don't take a very aggressive approach when it comes to spending money on things I don't need, like a new car. Guys, I drive a $4,000 Ford Explorer from 2004, and I just got served a $600 bill for it, and uh, I'm tired of it, so I'm buying a new car. <laughs> but um, I don't want to buy a new car. Quite frankly, I would drive that thing till the wheels quite literally fell off, but the wheels quite literally are about to fall off. That $600 bill was because three of the wheels and their fittings and everything are all jacked up, so I kind of need to get a new car. But... <laughs> There you go. Um, when did I get into crypto? Sorry, I'm new. No need to be sorry, Preston. That's okay. I got into crypto July 31st, 2017. Marcel just donated 35 czar. Said, thank you for spam. Uh, so thank you. Sorry for spamming your chat earlier. Feels bad, man. It's okay. It's quite all right. No no problem. I appreciate the apology. And I appreciate the money, too. Thank you very much. What is that? Uh, what, what currency is that? Is that South African? G-A-R... South African Rand, right. Appreciate it, bud. Thank you very much for the donation and the apology. That's okay. No harm, no foul. We're all good. It's good. Jeb needs a cyber truck. Oh my gosh. I actually have a reservation for a cyber truck. I paid the hundred dollars to get a reservation, so I'm at the front of the line. I can get one if I want. So give me a one in chat if you think I should get a cyber truck. I'm not getting one, just so you know, but um, I'm in line, so I could if I wanted to. Um, yeah. You weren't lying about the haircut, bro. Looks good. Yeah, guys, in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and shout out uh, the person that cut my hair. His name's Corey. Um, follow Corey underscore the barber. C-O-R-Y, Corey underscore the barber on Instagram. And go tell him that Crypto Jeb sends him some love. He did a very good job on my hair. That dude is so precise. That man is sitting there for like 20 minutes being like, this one hair is out of place. Let me fix this. Great. Great, great, great. Let me know when you get your cyber truck and we'll go for a drive. Oh, my gosh. So dang one. <laughs> How many times a day do you check the tr check the trends of coins? Sev many times a day. In fact, most of the time while I'm doing admin work, because again, guys, small business owner, I have a ton of stuff to do. We're working on expense reports right now, a bunch of stuff you don't care about, so I'm not going to get into it. But when I'm doing all that admin stuff, I'm normally checking the chart every 20 minutes or so. Corey trending now, yeah. Don't get a cyber truck. That thing is ugly. I thought it was ugly too at first, and then I realized this is the most genius marketing scheme I've ever seen. They made an ugly truck, but it's not ugly. It's just different. And got so much attention. By the way, Brandon says C22A is great value, especially with the coupon code. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and consider signing up for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. The link is in the description down below. When will Corey finish the other hairs? What other hairs? BitBoy lives that not that far from you. Yeah, I know. He, he, uh, he lives in um, Georgia. He lives in Atlanta. I think that's public news. I didn't dox him, did I? <laughs> don't test the glass resistance okay yeah i should grow an afro my friend i can't grow an afro to save my life my hair is so straight question small business owner where can i find info for plugging my businesses into crypto bringing digital assets to my balance sheet accounts here know nothing they don't know anything i swear not nobody knows anything about crypto it's so hard to find people to get help for that it's actually an issue for us because something like 40 percent of our of our revenue as a company comes in in cryptocurrency assets it doesn't apply into Quicken. It doesn't apply into QuickBooks. I don't know, to be honest with you. It's a problem that we're coming, that we're working on at the same time as you are, Zito. What I did in Quicken, because I track my personal finances on Quicken, and I track all the businesses' expenses over there too. That's not our that's not our our formal tracking of everything, but it's one of the ways that we track things. What I do is over in Quicken, I put a cash balance in there, and I just I rename it to cryptocurrency assets, and then I have a tracker and a spreadsheet, and I update it once a day with uh, the Bitcoin and Ethereum price, because that's like 95% of our of our uh, cryptocurrency holdings. And then I have it all calculating it out. I'd use a spreadsheet and then just use the cash balance feature of uh, Quicken, or if you're in QuickBooks, then you, can, then you can use something similar. I forget what it's called over there, but it's just a, it's a, just a, like cash on hand. You know how you would be able to put into your accounting software cash on hand, just use it like that. Is MicroStrategy a good way to get Bitcoin exposure? Guys, the MicroStrategy news is huge. I don't have the paper on my desk that I was looking at earlier about this, but Michael Saylor, 
is running a conference tomorrow explaining to a ton of industry insiders what Bitcoin is. How much is CT2A and what's the success rate? CT2A runs $274 after the after the New Year's 2021 coupon code. I would say the success rate is very, very high. Give us a one in chat if it's been successful for you. We get all kinds of people telling us how successful they've been after CT2A has helped them. I, I, I don't have a number on it because like, that's not something that you can really measure. That's more of an abstract concept because what does success mean? But as far, if we define it as how many people made more than $274 because of the money they spent on cryptocurrency, uh, the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, I'd say 100% of the people that actually applied it. If you actually apply what's in it, I'd say it's 100% success rate. You're about to see some ones in chat. You got a haircut. Looks like you got all of them cut. I did get a haircut, and I got all of them cut. I got a lot of them cut, yeah. All those ones in chat are the people that are saying that CT2A has been successful for them. Um, I just finished CT2A. It was great, said Laura. Magician says CT2A is legit. Niels, Magician, Bacana. Bacana, uh, Leo Crypto, and Orion Bular uh, all say CT2A is great. Use your debt as an asset. Yep, exactly. If you're going to take on debt, don't take on commercial debt. Don't, I'm sorry, don't take on consumer debt. But there's nothing wrong with taking on debt for a building if you're going to use that extra 80% that you can get a loan on and invest it back in your business or something the way that we do. There's good debt and there's bad debt. The thing is, I don't... You're, you're right, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. The problem is I don't like the idea of calling debt good or bad in the first place. It's how you use it. There's a good use of debt and there's a bad use of debt. There are plenty of people that use debt in a very bad way. Jevin made more than $300 just looking at your and other videos, let alone CT2A. El Villa said, one CT2A. It's in my personal library since middle 2018. Can't imagine what you could do with more training. CT2A, I go back to it once a week. One from Blaster. Um... Perfect to understand what TA Leo Crypto says. So a lot of people enjoy CT2A. You can see I uh, I want to do the course pins. I am so excited to hear you say that. If you're interested, the link is in the top of the pin is in the top of the description box down below. I'm gonna go ahead and check and make sure that's there. Give me a seven in chat if that's down there. I'm pretty sure it is. Yes, it is. Okay, it is. Don't worry about the seven thing. It's down there. If you're interested, you can sign up for CT2A with a link in the description box down below. All you gotta do, I'm gonna show you. And then I'm not going to spend too much more time on this because I don't want to be all salesy and everything. But I do want to let you know so that you know. If you go to the landing page, you're going to see this right here. All you have to do is hit this button right here. Enroll in course for $349. It's going to take you to a checkout page. You're going to be able to add your coupon code in right here. So if we go New Year's 2021, hit apply. That's going to knock $75 off. Come down here, card payment. Um, anything like that, 14-day money-back refund guarantee. You can see it right there. Billing address. Go ahead and join us, and that's all there is to it. It's really that simple. You're going to get access to all 36 videos and 12 hours of course material down here, and it's going to help you understand cryptocurrency a lot, guys. I think it's a great investment, one that you should definitely consider. Let's discuss ADA. Guys, we will talk about ADA here in just a second. Good, good question. Good, good question. So uh, if you're interested check out ct2a's links in the description neil's yan or jan jan or yan i know some people in south africa call it um, or pronouncing it yan i don't know um ct2a is great value for your money you should only take on debt if you're very sure you can beat the interest rate with whatever you invest in max exactly see our business grew 380 percent last year and we're expecting 500 percent growth this year so yeah we can beat the interest rate most people are not in the position that i'm in so it's harder for them nessie said one on ct2a guys there's like 20 or 30 people talking about how great ct2a is check it out links in the description box down below we know it's valuable for you we've seen thousands of people go through it and being very very helpful for them anyway you guys want to see some ada technical analysis now i'm going to admit to you i'm admit sounds wrong because it sounds like i'm it sounds like i did something wrong and i didn't i just i didn't do anything wrong but i'm gonna just tell you that i haven't looked too much into what cardano has been doing over the last couple of days but I do, I, I do. I have been keeping up with Cardano over the last several weeks, and I can tell you what the technicals are doing. So let's go ahead and do some technical analysis on Cardano. I know you guys are interested in that. <sighs> so let's go ahead and do it. The first thing I want to do is actually jump back on over to CoinMarketCap and look at some basic data over here. Cardano is trading at 43 cents. It's a shame it's not at 42 cents because, as you know, 42 is the answer to life, universe, and everything, but 
that's beside the point. Cardano is up 24% today and 32% over the last seven days. Notice the seven-day price chart over here is looking fantastic. And I'm really wondering how long Wall Street bets will be up here on Coin Market Cap. This was a funny meme like five days ago. I don't I don't know if it really needs to be up there anymore. By the way, this is beside the point, but we just passed a trillion dollars market cap again. Anyway, looking at Cardano, there are several things to point out here. Number one, Cardano is riding the 20 daily EMA, and we have seen it consistently do this for quite some time. We saw a few dips below it back in November and December, but in general, Cardano has been riding its 20 daily EMA, which is a very good thing. We saw Bitcoin do the same, but Bitcoin got really far away from its 20 EMA. Notice all of this area under here where we didn't touch the 20 uh, daily EMA. On ADA USD, we didn't see the same thing happen. On ADA USD, we saw this market riding it and testing it every several days. The reason that's important is because it means that Cardano has been staying very healthy during this rally. Cardano has not been getting massively overextended. If we take the log chart off, you'll see it's been a pretty big rally recently. Ever since November, we've seen Cardano rally 300%, but in doing that, it still seems like it's a healthy rally. It still seems like Cardano is giving a chance for the bears to come in playing devil's advocate, letting the bears come in, sell their Cardano, and letting the market rally in a healthy manner. Looking back on it, you can see this is the highest Cardano has been valued at in a very long time. And we can actually look at the total price chart here on CoinMarketCap. Cardano launched and it went up to crazy price targets up here above a dollar. And it looks like the same thing might be happening. This chart that we're looking at here, Kraken doesn't go all the way back to the very beginning. But also, one thing that I'm sure you guys noticed, and this might be why you're asking me to talk about it, on Daily Chart, we just saw a bullish MACD cross on Cardano. We also saw the same thing happen on Bitcoin. Excuse me. We're about to see the same thing happen on Bitcoin right over here. This is Bitcoin's MACD right here. RSI is trending to the upside. We've just seen the same thing happen on Cardano. Cool. Continuing to lay the foundation, looking at RSI, we've seen what you might call an RSI uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern down here. You might call it a triple bottom. Whatever you want to call it, it's probably very bullish for Cardano. We also saw a head and shoulders pattern here on the RSI. It looks like that will have played out by now, though. Again, just going over technicals, getting things floating around in our head, processing what's going on in this market so that we can start coming to conclusions. Another thing to notice, Cardano has seen very low volatility as of the couple, last couple of days. And two days ago, it bounced off the 20 daily EMA, rallied quite substantially. And that's where this 33% rally comes in, 30%, whatever, rallied from 33 cents to 43 cents. In doing that, Bitcoin, I'm sorry, Cardano started to expand the Bollinger Bands again. Notice the Bollinger Bands have started to get wider again over the last two days. We saw all this volatility drop off and decline from this big rally. And this is one of the first points I want to make on Cardano is that Cardano has seen a decrease in vol uh, saw a decrease in volatility, allowing the bulls to calm down, allowing the bulls to reset, allowing the bulls to fill their bags and sell a little bit, turn into bears for a couple of days, make their money back, and then people are able to come back into the space. That's what I'm talking about with healthy correction. I'm actually very happy with the way Cardano is rallying. Unlike Ethereum, unlike Bitcoin that are getting hyped to the freaking moon, Cardano, even though it's up 300% in 90 days, is doing what I want to see these markets do. It is having a healthy rally. It is having a healthy bull market. It is having corrections. It is losing volatility every once in a while. It is going through the traditional market cycles of a healthy bull market, and that is very, very important. I like Cardano's project also, so there's fundamental reason to believe that it's going to continue up again we saw these sideways movements in here in december we also saw it more recently here in january now cardano is rallying again good deal love it i want to see more of that another thing to look at every time we trade sideways here what are we doing we're setting up big support on vpvr there's a big valley right here where there's not much notice this big bit of vpvr support between 27 cents and about 37 cents that is significant because what that means is that Cardano has used this time here to build a floor of support that if we ever rally and come back down to will be the baseline of the next rally. So that's a good thing as well. And by the way, Bitcoin's doing the exact same thing. I just want to see it continue to do it because it's seen just a massive rally. ADA hasn't rallied as far as Bitcoin has. It's up 300% in the last 90 days. Bitcoin's up 700% in the last 11 months. So it's a little different. Nevertheless, Cardano, let's go over it again. MACD just crossed bullish, setting up support around 30 to 40 cents, somewhere in that region. RSI is trending to the upside, about to break 70, which is actually a good thing. The second you break 70, it doesn't mean that the market's going to pull back. It's actually a bullish signal because it signals that the bulls are strong enough to push us into overextended territory. Looking at our TD sequential, again, just looking at all these technical indicators, seeing if there's anything that jumps out at us. Our uh, TD sequential isn't overextended Monthly chart TD sequential is, but that's what you see in bull markets. This could potentially pull back and reset, and it'd be okay. At the end of the day, guys, 
And also, we saw three months of correction here, and it didn't reset TD Sequential. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of inclined to just ignore this nine flash. To be quite honest with you, everything technically speaking speaks pretty highly to Cardano and makes it seem like Cardano is a project that you want to invest in and you want to put your time into. Its technicals look very strong. That being said, as I said, uh, we don't see a ton of. You guys are talking about Ethereum. We don't see a ton of, or excuse me, I don't know exactly what's going on as far as the technicals are concerned over on Cardano. I'm sorry, the fundamentals are concerned over on Cardano because I haven't been following it very closely as of the last several days. So that's something you need to look into. You for yourself need to go and look into the fundamentals on Cardano and come to a conclusion on if I am reading it. I see Ethereum. I'm about to talk about it. Go and do some technical analysis and some fundamental analysis on Cardano and see what you think. All right, guys. And this is the reason I love Crypto Jeb. Clean, genius technical analysis that you can easily learn. I guess that's the reason for CT2A, don't you think? Steven Watson, that is the point. That's what we're trying to do here. Everybody's talking about Ethereum, and I'm about to show you why I'm not freaking out about Ethereum the way you guys are uh, just yet. Anyway, I'm going to read Chad here for a second, and we're going to look at it. We're going to look at Ethereum. That's going to be the last thing we do today. Thank you for all the comments on the haircut. I appreciate it, guys. I, heard, I hope Ethereum doesn't fall because I heard it's scared of heights. Any news on... Let's see here. If all these guys getting haircuts is good news, right? Yes. Haircuts are good news. Okay. Breaking news, my friends. Ethereum is in the process of breaking all-time high. That is why I wanted to wait a second. Because I had a feeling Ethereum was about to do it, but it hadn't done it yet. I actually had this red line on the chart from earlier signifying the previous all-time high at $1,479. As of this minute, Ethereum has broken all-time high. Go and share this live stream with everybody so that they know that Ethereum is breaking all-time high live right now. You guys remember, we have made a price prediction on Ethereum of $2,894 before the end of March. I'm a little bit skeptical on whether or not we're actually going to be able to to hit that by the end of March, it may take a little longer, but at the end of the day, Ethereum just broke all-time high. Set a new all-time high. You can see the difference here. I'll go ahead and put the horizontal line right. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and put the horizontal line right here. Set an all-time high, ten dollars higher at one thousand four hundred eighty-eight dollars. Really quickly, I just want to show you guys all the different times Ethereum has broken ATH recently. It's happened several times, and uh, it's pretty funny because every time we do it, we rally to it and then correct. That was the previous all-time high. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got something in my throat. That was the previous all-time high at 147300 And then we set a new all-time high right here, at uh, right there. And then we set a new all-time high there, and then we set one here. So we have four all-time, we had four all-time highs. This bottom one down here that we're using as support at 1422 was the all-time high we set in early 2018, January 16th, 2018, whenever. Then we set another one at 1441. Then we set one a couple of weeks ago at 14. Uh, 79. Then we just set one three minutes ago at 1488. This is the third all-time high break that we have seen recently, and that is pretty cool. I think we're actually about to see a lot of bullishness coming out of this because we're also seeing some bullishness on Bitcoin. Rallied to 35.6 earlier, and that very well may continue. Looks like Ethereum is just sitting a couple of inches away from breaking all-time high again. 4862, 48. 8890. Gonna move this up a little bit. There we go. <laughs> cool. The only thing is, guys, it sucks. While I have the chart up, I can't see the chat. So sorry that I can't see chat. If you want me to read chat, I gotta take the chart down because our stream setup is a little jacky. A little jacky? My dog's name is Jackie, so maybe that's why I said that. It's a little janky right now. Um, I'm gonna switch over to full screen real quick just so I can look at chat. Barber here can confirm. Can confirm what? Your thoughts on F2 pool dumping Bitcoin? We talked about that earlier in this stream, and we talked about it in this live stream, early, and we talked about it in today's video also, by the way, which will be, which will be coming out pretty soon. Give me a one in the chat if you would like tomorrow's live stream to do some Ethereum technical analysis, because I'm sorry, but I am completely out of breath, and it's going to suck if I do it today. But we will do it for tomorrow's live stream if you would like I think tomorrow there might actually be more news than there is right now. I will tell you that with Ethereum breaking all-time high, keep a very close eye on <clears throat> keep a very very close eye on this market because Ethereum might be about to see a massive breakout. When do you think ETH will go down? ETH Honestly, at this point it's hard to tell, my friend.
just hit 1500 on Femex. Good. In that case, you probably will be expecting some more movement on the chart pretty soon here. ETH broke all-time high, my friend. By the way, guys, if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button. We just passed 71,500 subscribers, and I'm really excited about it, guys. I really appreciate everybody who has subscribed to the channel. We've gotten like 10,000 new subscribers recently. Very appreciative of that. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be doing a ton of content on Ethereum over the next couple of days because it just broke all-time high. Give me a heart in chat if you're looking forward to that. Cross Canada said we love you, Jeb. I love you too. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Pull up the chart. Yes, so the reason I took the chart down, guys, is because, like I said earlier, I can't read the chat while I'm looking at the chart because I don't have two monitors set up right now. I have two monitors. The other one's sitting right here off screen, but I can't have it up because it's be in front of the camera. It goes like right here which is kind of in the way <sighs> so ethereum 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 let's go down to the minute chart real quick this is what ethereum looks like just had a big old rally down here on the minute chart rallied all the way from 1438 up three and a half percent in eight minutes and right now currently we are sitting just below the new all-time high figure of on bitfinex anyway one thousand four hundred and ninety dollars Looks like we might be dumping a little bit. Like I said, guys, I can't see chat, but I'll sit here and commentate on it because I know that's what you guys want. This very well may end up being a bull flag. I know you guys are thinking about that. This could be a bull flag indicating movement uh, even farther higher. I do want to point out what I said earlier. Notice all these three red lines right here. These are previous all-time highs. The bottom one down here was 2017s. And write that. That was 2018s, actually. This was the first one. This is the second one. And this is today's. So Ethereum has been breaking all-time high quite a lot lately. And unfortunately, whenever it breaks all-time high, it normally doesn't break all-time high and uh, rally very far. So maybe third time's a charm. This is the third all-time high break this month. And we will sit here and look at Ethereum for a little bit. And uh, I will switch back and forth from chat to the chart every once in a while. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to chart for a minute. Nice haircut, Jeb. See you on the beach. <laughs> Thank you. Jeb, you're an amazing person. I'm not an amazing person. You just see the best side of people on camera. Most importantly, do you like cheese? I love cheese. Cheese is a godsend. I've been subscribed for a while now. I know you... Ch I changed my YouTube name, so I don't know if you recognize me or not. Jay Swizz? I don't recognize that name, but if you tell me your previous name, I may recognize that. Greetings from Greece. Greetings from America, my friend. Nice look. Thank you. Oh, goodness gracious, guys. I made two videos today, and I've been streaming for an hour. I am tired. Looking forward to... Actually, my lunch break started seven minutes ago, but I don't take lunches because we have a job to do. Ethereum just broke all-time high. I'm going to check it again. It's all good. Nothing crazy happening. I'm mining one Ethereum every four days. Woot woot. Good for you, Eric. Dang. Give me a one in chat if you'd like some mining content, by the way, because I'm thinking about setting up some miners and uh, showing you guys all of that. Probably won't happen for the next six months, but something that we'll probably do. What's my favorite cheese? I actually really like goat cheese, to be honest with you. <laughs> Josh donated $2, says some cheddar to buy some cheese. My friend, thank you. James A. Hey, always good being here. I'm still a mod. I hope you remember and still trust me. I do. Hey from Germany. Hey from America, my friend. Count Stacula said, Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. <laughs> do you recognize me from the paintings I showed you on Twitter? I do, actually. I remember that. Those are awesome. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's dope. Guys, go check him out on Twitter. Yep. I do remember that. I've got nine I've got 98 GPUs I've bought over the last three years. Now I make more mining than working. <laughs> Dang, okay. Love what you do for the crypto community, Jeb. Grits from Belgium. Greeting from America, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for the channel from the Netherlands. Hey. Start following this channel when I got into crypto back in May last year. Always great content. Keep it up. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. 
Let's make sure that Ethereum's not doing nothing crazy. Oh, it did. Okay. Ethereum uh, broke the all-time high figure it set literally six minutes ago again. New all-time high is setting at $1,494.97. Almost $1,500. Looks like we may be about to have another break of it. We shall see. I'm going to watch this for a couple minutes, and then I really do have to go, guys. A lot more work to get done. But, uh, oh, is this it? Guys, I, I mean, I'm not going to tell you to long. I'm not going to tell you to trade this. But there is very possibly an amazing long trade being set up right now. If you guys are interested, you can sign up for Bybit with the link in the description box down below. It helps to support this channel. Um, it, it is very possible that we're about to see a giant breakout on Ethereum here. And it'd be very interesting if we did. New all-time high just set at $1,498 flat. This is very possibly about to be a giant breakout. Um, guys, like I said, this is... Uh, but keep in mind, that there is about 30 seconds of stream delay on this stream. So everything you see on here is about 30 seconds behind. I would encourage you to have your own charts up so you're watching this live over there. But it's very clear that the bulls are pumping Ethereum. I don't have a stop... I don't have a depth chart that I can bring up real quick. Let's see if I can get more technicals up here. Oh, goodness. I don't know where the depth charts are on trading view. Oh, I need to know that. Where are the depth charts on Trading View? I don't know if I can see the depth chart on Trading View. Do you guys know if you're able to bring up depth charts on Trading View? I really would like to be able to see what's going on over on, on Bitfinex without bringing up all my trading stuff. Stock screener. Dang. Well, either way, we're sitting in a lot of buying pressure. There used to be one. It was right over here, and I just noticed it's not there anymore because I haven't looked at it recently. Where is my depth chart? Play sound. I don't see a depth chart. That's okay. We're going to go back here. Make sure you're watching your own chart, guys. Oh, man. Hey, Jeb. From Malaysia by a Fili Filipino. Love your channel, kid. Thank you. Love you, too. Doesn't appear as if Bitcoin is pumping. It's not really pumping, no. Thank you from South Florida. Thank you from North Central Florida. <laughs> Red TD flash on four hour. There you go. Hydropower, 10 cents per kilowatt. Wow. Dang. Just set a new all time high figure. Again, consistently setting new all time high. Let's set this up here $1,498.88 over on Bitfinex. Coin market flow is good for depth. Thank you, James. I've never heard of that. see here never used this site before in my life so I'm going to try and figure this out Let's see if I can't get a depth chart up real quick go Gators go Gators we're in the home of the Gators where I live okay so this is what he was talking about if you guys don't know what a depth chart is it just shows you how many the volume of buying orders at different price at uh, different price levels and then shows you the selling orders at the exact same time. Over here, I believe, like I said, I've never used this website before. We just had this shouted out from someone. Bitfinex has $27 million in bid and $33 million in asks. This is a useful site. I'm going to bookmark this, actually. This book, this is called um, coinmarketflow.com. Like CoinMarketCap, but it's CoinMarketFlow. What is this right here? This is the books. Okay, so one week. This is really interesting price data. Wow, I like this. I really like this. Okay, well, it looks like the cell walls are pretty high over on Ethereum right now. Let's check Ethereum. Yep, nothing new. Looks like the cell walls are pretty high over Ether on Ethereum, looking at several hundred million dollars in volume daily. Cool. Hmm. Cool, guys. Well, I hate to do it to you, but I'm going to have to go. I would love to continue following Ethereum, but guys, I have got to get some food. I have got to take care of myself or we're not going to be able to continue doing our work here. Appreciate it, guys. If you enjoyed this live stream, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. We're growing very quickly here, and I would love for you to be part of our continued journey. I would love for, I'd love to get some of your takes on what you'd like to see next on this channel. Um, I know you'd like to see some more technical analysis, but I have to go. I'm sorry. Thanks, Jeb, for the course. Thanks from Dubai. Thank you from America, my friend. If you haven't already, consider joining CT2A. It's the academy that we use to teach thousands of students how to do technical analysis. The link's in the description box down below. Again, if you haven't set up TradingView, there is a free preview for that video over on our landing page. Do you have a video on CT2A on depth charts? Yes, we have a video detailing exactly what depth charts are and how they work. It's a very important thing to understand. So yes, we do talk about that. 
You've seen the look on my boss's face when I told him I quit because I make more money mining at home than working for you. That's hilarious. Bye. Thanks, Jeb, said Metal. Oh, man. Emery, good to see you. Sorry, I can't stay for a cup of tea. I don't have any tea in the office anyway. Thanks, Jeb. Smashing that like. Stay golden. I will. Looking like money these days. Money helps. No, it's just a good haircut. That's all. <laughs> good deal. All right, guys. Keep an eye on Ethereum. We might be about to see a huge breakout. If we do, we will probably go ahead and make a video on it. Subscribe and, <clears throat> subscribe and promoting your channel. Thank you, Parrot. That's what I'm talking about. When you talk to yourself as quickly as I talk for an hour straight, it screws up your throat. And I don't want to hurt myself. Um, anyway, guys, enough rambling. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching. As always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Watch today's video. It's really good. You need to see what I'm talking about. It's breaking news. Okay, bye.